Hey folks, Mr. G here. <clears throat> Welcome back to uh, ELIC 200, Electric Machines course. Today's lecture, today's lecture, we're going to look at what is power generation, and then we're going to do a breakdown of what is single phase, two phase, and three phase power generation. And we're going to do a comparison of the three. So again, today's lecture, what is power generation? And then single phase versus two phase versus three phase generation. So let's get started. So, power generation. What is an electrical generator? So what's an electrical generator? So by definition, an electrical generator is a machine. What's the job of the machine? Well, the job of the machine is to actually turn mechanical energy into electrical energy. So when we look at what an electrical generator does, it converts some form of mechanical so some kind of mechanical energy into electrical energy so what is an electrical generator by definition it's a machine that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. If you remember from physics study in previous schooling, you might be aware of the law of energy conversion. So it says that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but only changed in form. So we're not creating new energy with the electrical generator, we are converting mechanical into electrical energy. So it's a machine that converts mechanical into electrical energy. All right, so first thing we're gonna be looking at is what's known as a single phase generator. This generator will produce one phase of electricity. There are a few different parts to a generator. The part that does not move is called the stator. Inside the stator, we typically have a coil of wire. The coil has two distinct ends. We call one end of the coil one, the other end of the coil we call A, and that distinguishes the two different ends of the same coil. Then the part that moves is called the rotor, sometimes referred to as an armature, but the part that rotates is the rotor. In our case, the rotor is a magnet. It's got a north pole and a south pole. So basically the rotor spins. So the mechanical part of the generator is the moving rotor that somehow creates electricity. So now we're going to figure out how it actually happens. So I have here just the wire. Inside the wire, we have electrons as part of the copper. We know that if we were to apply a voltage to this wire. So we were applying energy to the wire. 
we could cause the electrons to move. And when we cause the electrons to move, we end up with current. But in this case, we're not applying a voltage, we're trying to create one. So, if I was to take this wire, and let's just pretend that we had a magnet. So let's pretend that this is a magnet. If I move the magnet along the wire, the magnetic field actually has an interaction with the electrons that are in that wire. So we have the electrons as part of the atomic structure of this wire, and they're sitting there. If I introduce a magnetic field into that wire and I was able to move the magnetic field, I could get the electrons to follow the magnetic field. So if I actually move the magnetic field down one side, the electrons will go to one side. If I move it all the way back, the electrons will go to the other side. So electrons are attracted to one side of a magnet and repelled by the other side of the magnet. So again, attracted to one side and repelled by the other side. So, if I have a magnet as my rotor, and I have wire wrapped in a coil around inside the stator, and I moved the magnet, I can cause electrons to move. So one side of the magnet will cause the electrons to come to here. So if I did this, if the north attracted the electrons, the electrons would leave here and come to this side. So they're running away from the south and coming to the north. As I spun this around, the electrons would go the other way. They would run away from this side and try and come to this side. So if I was to take some wires out of the generator, what would I have? Now the obvious answer is, oh, you're going to have current flow, sir. Really, we don't. Because there's no place for the current to go yet. Remember, in order to actually have current flow, we have to have a closed loop. We don't have that yet. But what we do have is the potential for current flow. So, what is potential? Potential is voltage. So, if we were to tap a couple of wires off of that coil, and I was to rotate the generator, I would create voltage. So, where does the mechanical energy come from? There are many sources of mechanical energy that are used in generators depending on what uh, 
environment they are in. You can have a gas generator. So one that powers your house during a power failure. So that runs normally on some type of internal combustion engine. You can have a wind turbine. So the mechanical energy is coming from the wind spinning the big uh, fan, if you will, on the generator or on the windmill. Niagara Falls. So we have hydro generation. So the force of the water coming over the falls is actually spinning the turbines at the bottom of the falls. That's the mechanical force. If you look at a nuclear uh, generating station, typically it is a nuclear reaction creating steam forced through and that's what's spinning the generator. So there are many things that actually spin the generator. In this class, we don't care where the mechanical energy comes from. All we care about is there is mechanical energy and it is actually spinning the rotor. So for this class, we are going to say that Superman, when he's not fighting crime, he spends the rest of his day with a crank on this generator basically spinning the rotor round and round and round. So Superman's job when he's not fighting crime is to spin this generator around and around and create electricity. So that's what we're going with for this class. So what does the actual electricity look like? So I've got the generator and I'm going to start in this position right here where the north of my magnet is attracted to the one side of my coil. Now if I go back to this example of having a wire and a magnet Where do you think the magnet will have its greatest uh, interaction with the wire? When the magnet is far away or when the magnet is close? So again, which one of these would cause the greatest reaction? It would obviously be when the magnet is close to the wire. So when the magnet is closest to the wire, it has the biggest effect on the electrons in that wire. So from AC circuits, in AC circuits, we draw a waveform. If we were to look at the voltage waveform that's coming out of this generator as it spins, the greatest effect happens when the magnet is the closest or at the closest point to where that wire is. In an AC waveform, that is the peak. So we're going to start right here and we're going to say that that north has the greatest effect on that wire right there. So now as the rotor spins away from that wire. So as the rotor spins away from the wire, the reaction from electrons and the magnetic field 
dies off. So therefore, my energy dies off. When I get to 90 degrees, at 90 degrees, this is as far away from here as this one is. So the force of the North Pole is cancelled out by the force of the South Pole. So therefore, there's no interaction with the electrons. So that means we are at zero. That is at 90 degrees. As we continue with our rotation, Superman spins, 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 spins. Now the North Pole is getting closer to the other end of that coil. So the electrons are now running in the opposite direction. So once we get to 180 degrees, The North Pole is down here, causing the greatest effect at this point. As Superman continues to spin, again, as the pole gets farther and farther away, the interaction dies off. We get to 270 degrees. And again, they are equal distance, cancelling each other out. So therefore, no energy is being absorbed, if you will, by those electrons. So then, as we continue our rotation and the north starts to get closer and closer to where we were, we're building and building and building up to we get to 360 degrees so one complete rotation of a generator creates a voltage potential that looks like this 360 degrees so if we started at zero and this is the voltage if we started at zero we would actually go 360 degrees and then if we continued another rotation it would continue on again etc so we would just keep on continuing as long as that rotor was being spun by Superman all right so, we now have the potential, so the voltage coming out of the generator. What if I took those wires now and put them to a resistor? So now we have a closed loop. So we've got the voltage potential, we've got a closed loop, so therefore we can actually now have current flowing. So now that we have this closed loop and we have this resistive load, we can have current flowing. So if I was to take this waveform, so this is our voltage waveform, and I was now connecting a resistor, we would have current flowing. From AC circuits, you should remember that when you put an AC voltage onto a resistor, 
the current that is flowing through the circuit is in phase with the voltage. So the current is in phase with the voltage. So if I was to draw the current waveform, so let's say here is current. In phase means they peak at the same time, they cross zero at the same time, they peak at the negative point at the same time, again they cross zero, and then they peak again here, and they cross zero here at the same time, and then they peak over here at the same time. The level of the current is not important right now, because remember that's just Ohm's law. But the shape Okay, so the current is now in phase with the voltage. So if this is, the red is the voltage waveform, and the green is the current waveform. The question would be, what does the power waveform look like? because we are talking power generation, not voltage generation, not current generation, but power generation. So what does, what does the power waveform look like? Well, from Tech 101, you should remember that power is equal to voltage times current. So I have a voltage waveform and I have a current waveform. So what would my power waveform look like? Well, I'm going to do instantaneous math. So I'm going to take peak times peak is going to give me peak. Zero times zero is giving me zero. Zero times zero is giving me zero. Peak times peak is giving me peak. Now here's a tricky one. Negative peak times negative peak gives me positive peak. A negative times a negative gives me positive. So if I was to draw a waveform, it would actually resemble this. That would be the power waveform. So in this specific example, a single phase generator if we looked at the power waveform, it would be this blue waveform. Now, if you looked at this waveform, there's something that should stand out to you. One, when you are dealing with resistors and the voltage and current are in phase, there is no such thing as negative power. The power waveform is all on the positive side. So when you look at this, and you look at that blue power waveform, I'm going to tell you that that waveform really upsets Superman. Let me show you why. Here is my generator again. All day long Superman spins this rotor. 
So he is applying a continuous mechanical energy to that generator. So Superman is spinning the generator all day long, continuously. But look, there are parts in the rotation where zero power is actually being generated. So when the waveform drops down to zero, even though the generator continues to spin, there is no power being generated at those points. So Superman, he gets a little upset with this because this is a very inefficient system. So a single phase generator is very inefficient. Why? Because there are points where there are no power. So therefore during this time, this time, and this time even though the generator is continuing to spin there's no power being generated. So, we have to come up with a solution. We need to be able to make Superman more happy. We need to be able to increase the efficiency of the generator. So, what we do is we get rid of the single phase generator. And we bring on a two-phase generator. Now, in a two-phase generator, we have two sets of coils. We'll make one blue, and we will make one red. Those coils are identified by the labels 1, A, 2, B. So the 1A, that is one coil. The 2B is another coil. This end of this coil, so the numbered end of the blue coil, corresponds to the numbered end of the red coil. Okay, so they are the same end of two different coils. Same thing here. They are the same end of two different coils. So now let's say I now spin this generator around. What would my waveform look like? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same thing as what we did before. We're going to tap off of this coil. Going to tap off of this coil. And I'm creating two voltage potentials inside one generator. So, on the blue side, when my magnet is closest to this pole here, this magnetic uh, winding, when it's the closest, that's when I have the most interaction. So again, let's say that that is right there. As the magnetic field goes away, it's equal distance from that pole. So at 90 degrees, I'm at zero. So again, the same thing is happening. 
When the north is now approaching the opposite end, we are here. Equal distance again, we cross back, and then we complete our rotation. And if we continued our rotation, the whole thing would start over again. So again, this is 90 degrees of rotation. This is 2, uh, whoops, 180 degrees, 270, and then 360 degrees of rotation. And then continue on again, we get 450 degrees of rotation, etc., etc. So that is for the blue coil, 1A. But the red coil is embedded into the same generator. It's its own circuit, but it's inside the same generator. So as we spin this around, and we get 90 degrees rotation from the first one, that's when we peak at the second. So these are 90 degrees out of phase. So the voltages that are created in the rotation of this generator in a two-phase generator, the voltages are 90 degrees out of phase. So what does that actually look like? Well, here's our first waveform. That waveform was generated on coil 1A. Now I have the exact same coil inside the generator and we're calling it 2B. 90 degrees is when we peak. So these waveforms are 90 degrees out of phase. So when this one crosses zero, the other one is at its peak. When this one's at its peak, this one crosses zero. So they are 90 degrees out of phase. So this is for coil 2B. 1A, 2B. They are 90 degrees out of phase. So now what happens if I take those two coils and do the same thing. Here's a resistor, here's a resistor. I now have closed circuits, so closed loops. And with those closed loops, I can now have current flow. Again, because it's a resistor, the currents are in phase with the voltage. So let's take a look. So I'm going to go blue with blue. Here we go. So the current. So this waveform here is the voltage. This one is going to be the current. The current waveform is in phase with the voltage waveform. So the current is in phase with the voltage. When we look at the red one, same thing happens. So again, the voltage and current are in phase. So let me just get 
a smaller marker. There we go. So basically, we are in phase with the voltage. And this becomes the current for 2B. So again, the current and the voltages are in phase for each set of windings. So we have two completely separate set of windings affected by the same magnet, creating voltage potential in each. When we close the circuit, we now have current in each. So, if we have voltage and we have current, we have power. So what does the power waveform look like for each of those? Well, let's take a look. Again, the power waveform, peak times peak gives me peak. Zero times zero gives me zero. Negative peak, negative peak again gives me a positive peak. Zero, zero, zero. Positive peak, zero, zero, zero. So what we end up with is a power waveform that looks exactly the same as what we had in the single phase. So let's take a look. Again, what you're going to see, so this is power from 1A. What you're going to see is there's no negative content. Everything is positive. So now, what does the power waveform look like for 2B? Well, we're going to do instantaneous again. So I'm going to take peak peak gives me peak. I'm going to give me zero, zero gives me zero. Negative peak, negative peak gives me positive peak. Zero, zero gives me zero. Peak, peak gives me peak. And what we end up with is something that looks like this. And this is the waveform power for 2B. So, what we want to know is, as the whole machine is now being spun by Superman, I have two sets of coils going off to two different loads. What is the total power being created from this machine as it is spinning? So, power, you add up. So, if I looked at this, I could say peak plus zero is peak. Let me green. So, peak and zero is peak. Peak and zero is peak. Peak and zero, peak. Peak and zero, peak again. Peak and zero, peak again. Peak and zero, peak again. There. 50% and 50%. 50% and 50%. 50 and 50. 50 and 50. 50 and 50. 75 and 25, 25 and 75, do you get the point? If I was to add the two power waveforms together, so that would be power total is equal to power of 1A plus power of 2B. So that's the power of the whole machine 
we actually get a straight line and the power value is equal to what we call PM or the peak power of any one of those waveforms. So it's a straight line. So the machine itself now is creating constant power. So unlike before when Superman was spinning it and there were times when we weren't creating any power, now when Superman spins it for the complete total rotation, we're getting power being created at all points during that rotation. So that would improve the efficiency of this generator. So a two-phase generator is more efficient than a single-phase generator. And Superman is much happier now because as he is continuously spinning this around, it is continuously creating power. Because remember, you don't want to piss off Superman. So we're not going to stop there. We think we can do better. So what we're going to do is we are going to get rid of the two-phase generator and we are going to bring in a three-phase generator. Three-phase generator has three different coils. We have one, I'll have that, that becomes one A. We have another coil to B, and we have another coil, you guessed it, 3C. Three coils inside one stator with one rotor. Each coil is identical. Again, one, two, and three represent the same end of different coils. So if I was to ask you in a three-phase generator, what is the phase difference between 1A and 2B? Your answer should be 120 degrees. So, from this until we get to the next one with the same end of the coil, remember? So, from 1 to 2, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> from 1 to 2, we have rotated 120 degrees. From 2 to 3, we rotate another 120 degrees. From 3 back to 1, another 120 degrees. So in a three-phase generator, the coils are out of phase by 120 degrees. So if I did the exact same thing, so I tapped off of there, I tapped off of there, 
and I topped off of there, I would get three voltages each of them 120 degrees out of phase. So if we wanted to see what that would look like it would look something like this. So this would be from 1A. Oops, I made the wrong color, but that's okay. Then we have 120 degrees out of phase. So we would end up with, so 120 degrees, so this is 120 degrees from there to there so we would end up with something that looked like this and then the next one would be 120 degrees out of phase from that one and that would be there. So we have from 1A from 2B and from 3C. Three individual voltage waveforms each one of them 120 degrees out of phase. So, with those voltage waveforms, if we went and did the same thing and put resistors on here, and we ended up with current flow, we would end up with three currents. And again, the currents would be in phase with their own voltage. etc etc and then it gets messy but each would have its own voltage and current waveform when you have voltage and current you get power so what would the three phase power waveform look like So rather than me try and draw it on this mess, I have already created it for you. So post it in your notes is this. So this is a representation of the three different power waveforms that are created inside a three-phase generator. Again, notice there's no negatives. Okay, there's no negatives. So we got power for 1A, 2B, and 3C. And the power waveforms are out of phase. Just like
out of phase. So then the question becomes, if I have this generator, so three phase generator, and Superman is spinning the three phase generator around and round and round all day long, what does the three phase total power look like? So when we did the two phase, Remember, the two-phase power was a straight line. If we did this waveform, and we actually added up the power from 1A, the power for 2B, and the power for 3C, what we would end up with is a straight line but the value is now one and a half times what the peak power of any individual waveform would be. So when we looked at the two-phase waveform, the straight line was here. Three-phase, the straight line is here. So the machine is not only creating constant power when it's spinning, but it's now creating more power than the two-phase generator. So, if we look at the three of them together, So we had our one phase where we had points where there was no power being created even though the generator was still in motion. We then went to a two phase where now the power is constant while the generator is in motion. And then we went to three phase, where the power is constant when the generation or generator is in motion, but it is one and a half times larger than this one. So a three phase generator puts out one and a half times the power of a two phase generator. So Superman very upset. Why? Inefficient. Superman happier. Why? Because now at least we're constantly creating power. Superman very happy because now we are creating constant power at a higher level than before. So our efficiency of a three-phase generator is the highest of the generators that we have. This is how electricity is generated in places like Niagara Falls. It is three-phase electricity that is generated. It is three-phase electricity that is sent through the wires. It is three-phase electricity that ends up in your neighborhoods because it is the efficient way to actually create electricity. So, when we look at all of this, we end up with a way of efficiently creating electricity inside one machine with three coils that are 120 degrees out of phase with each other and we end up with individual power waveforms that look like this and a total waveform for the machine that looks like this. So what is an electrical generator?
An electrical generator is a machine that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. And then we looked at single phase, two phase, and three phase power generation. And in each case, the efficiency went up. Each case, Superman was happier. So I hope this helps. Until next time, everybody stay safe. Take care, everybody.